what we can do is if we play through it like now we can actually see that at that beat the demo man jumps and so that's, that's uh, it worked perfectly um, another thing that I love to do um, in my second movie team down was that whenever I had something I want to sync to um, I usually like to do a slow-mo that part because you know it seemed kind of cool and that's what all the CS movies back then were doing and uh, I thought I'd be pretty cool to introduce that to you know like TF2 movies not that it was original or anything but um, there are two ways in which you can actually do you know slow motion uh, with your clip um, if you right click on the footage um, oh here we go insert remove envelopes you go velocity and from here if you zoom in you can actually click uh, look, if you drag it up it actually speeds up the footage if you drag it down you can actually see a percentage there it actually slows down the footage and I'm just gonna and if you add a point so at this point you can change you know things afterwards like so so you know you can that it's kind of an anchor point and you know it's kind of a kind of adjust how you drag things and you know it's just something that you can mess around with but I never liked it you can add a couple of points and then you know you can see in this area right here it's going to be really fast if you drag it down here this period in between it's going to be actually pretty slowed down so um, yeah that's, a, that's the first way of doing it a lot of people use it. I didn't because uh, you know, I never got used to it. So you can check a bunch of tutorials out there. Um, but what I like to do, kind of slightly inferior but more simple and very easy to get your head around, is that you can actually split your footage into certain segments and then you slow it down from there. Um, so how you split your footage is you press S for split. And what it does is that it cuts your footage into two separate footages like that, kind of like a magic trick. Um, but what I really like to do is, you know, I, I usually get the start of where I want to slow down, and then, uh, you know, just a couple of frames later, you get the, uh, you know, the end of where your slow motion is. You press split again, you drag away this last bit. And so you got this small clip right here in which you want to slow down. And since we have 240 frames per second, we can, you know, stretch this footage out. Uh, a, you know, that is, slow it down uh, and still keep a good motion blur type quality going. And the way you slow down footage is to actually hold down control, go to either the left and right end of the footage and you actually see this little icon um, which is actually this kind of two pointed arrow with the zigzag line underneath so if you hold down control and you get that and you click and drag your footage what it's going to be doing is that it's actually you know, expanding that small segment say it's a one second segment to two seconds so that's a slow down of 50% so uh, what we have here is now a footage that is, you know, two times as slow. And you can drag it in and out as much as you want. Um, it actually has a limit of um, slowing down to a quarter of the speed. Um, so, you know, we can have that probably a bit too slow, but you just chuck that back to where, you know, it conjoined before chuck the end back to where it was before and you got yourself um, you know going up and then slow motion and then resume back to normal um, this is uh, you know, just the basic of slow motion now at first when people were doing a lot of slow motion um, they had this because not only are you stretching out the footage but you're stretching out the audio and unlike the footage in which you have 200 frames per second that you can stretch out you know easily um, when you stretch out audio you can not actually stretch it out smoothly without uh, you know it getting choppy because you know if you have a one second audio clip 
and you spread it over two seconds, you know, it's going to be you know chopped up so that it spreads over two seconds. Um, what you can do to overcome this is to right click on the audio file, go to properties and go lock to stretch. So if you click this button here, what it does is that it makes it so that the audio you know, changes its pitch, its uh, kind of smoothness so that it follows how much you extended it by and uh, it accompanies how you know how well or how far you actually did the slow-mo so um, in most cases when you do a slow motion the best way it does it is to extend out the sound and it makes it really slow and really low pitched <laughs> so um, yeah that's what you do when you um, stretch out your footage so that it doesn't become really really choppy however what a lot of people don't realize is that in the same manner in which you extend your footage out like so if you want to speed up your footage and you compress it to a speed like two times speed and you, some people just like to lock to stretch and what they don't realize is that it does the exact same thing it does with the slow mo footage so with the slow motion footage um, it stretches out the sound it lowers the pitch and so the converse happens when you speed up footage it becomes really chipmunky and really high pitched so um, you don't need to lock to stretch at all so just leave the audio as it is and it will sound normal and it's just be sped up so uh, just something that you know I see a lot of people do and you know you just don't need to do it um, so we got our first footage in like that that's our first sync point that's our first footage and I'm happy with that now what's our next footage we got a third person view drag that in wait for Sony Vegas to uh, you know kind of load the footage up like so and if I just drag I mean zoom out a bit we got a third person footage like I taught you guys I'm gonna up, increase the quality yeah so it's that kick-ass third person footage that I had before it's actually quite long so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be uh, chopping it up a bit around here I've had a bit too much extra footage here and uh, yeah we got myself a pretty good third person rocket jump here and we can sync to that rocket jump and uh, yeah that's a pretty cool second setup shot I don't like to use too many setup, setup shots but this is just a, you know, just a for learning purposes so um, what I usually do is um, if you have this this ticked up here it means automatic crossfade so what that does is that once you drag your clip and overlap it with your previous clip what happens in between is that it automatically makes a transition fading out from one from the first one and fading into the other this is the simplest and cleanest transition that you can get and I can't stress how good it can be sometimes you know a lot of the times people don't like it when you have really really obvious really dodgy transitions and these transitions include if you go through these tabs right here this transition pad uh, tab you got Venetian blinds type thing and you know once you drag that onto that transition area a transition property box will come up and you can just mess around with you know how many blinds you're gonna have how many times it spins and blah 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 and if we look through it oh yep that is disgusting <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that is you know how you make transitions. You can toggle, or you can once you drag in a transition, um, it has the 3D blinds is what it's called. And you can see it there, and it's got the kind of a, an X transition icon here, and that's the transition property. Once you click on that, you can you know edit the transition properties, or you can get rid of it by pressing this delete preset right here and no wait not preset I mean delete remove selected plugin there 
and now we're back to the normal one. Um, Vegas, Sony Vegas has a bunch of um, you know transitions. You know, star wipe, as Homer loves to say. Um, it's just a lot of the times it's not necessary. Um, but if you really want to do something, I mean, I guess it's just personal preference. But some wipes can be pretty good. Probably not clock wipes. Um, let's see some linear wipes like so. And uh, if you just drag it in, a really good thing um, is that you can just go through your crossfade here and you can see where it's at. Um, I really like to do a high feather value. Feathering is kind of like how, you know, how soft or how gradual the transition uh, of the transition is. So if you have it at zero, you can see that it's a zero pixel difference in uh, you know kind of yeah you know, the difference in the uh, wipe. Uh, if you increase it up a bit, it actually you know fades out a bit more, and the higher it is, the higher um, you know, the more pixel it fades out the gradient. Um, you can also change the angles, etc., etc. So we got ourselves this transition. Going to get rid of it, and uh, yeah. That's our second clip. Um, I I want to sync that point with this point here. So um, just gonna chop out a bit of the first clip I had before. Some you know ending footage that wasn't necessary. And go to the second marker and see when he does his rocket jump there. And uh, you know that's all right. It's a bit much of a of a transition. Zero point, you know, ten. That's a. It's not that long, so I'm happy with that. Um, go along. Looks pretty good. And yeah, I'm happy with that. We got our third you know, beat here, in which we can actually use that beat as you know point of transition, and we drag out our next footage. And uh, yeah, look from here. And on that beat, transition into that, and uh, actually, I'm just gonna make him go back to the rocket jump. I'm gonna make him rocket jump again, and, and and exploit the fact that I could do another sync. So S for split, move it right here. Yep, at that point he jumps, and look what we got here. Um, he fires there, so. You know, a cheap way that you could do is uh, to sync is just to press S and just kind of reduce or speed everything up so that it matches there and then chuck that back on and then uh, we got that. Um, just want to make sure that you don't speed it up too much. If it's by a little tiny bit, you can actually get things to look kind of natural and synced pretty you know, sweetly, like I did in YC50, where you know everyone thought he was firing at the same rate of the song when it was just slightly adjusted. So um, in the end, uh, we got three clips transitioning into each other, and uh, yeah, that's what we got. Uh, like how I said that splitting footage is inferior, it's because you can't merge them back together. So once you do that, mm -mm, you can't do much afterwards. Um, so we got, you know, how to do transitions like so. What I like to do at the beginning as a transition is just a fade from black, you know, and at the end a fade to black. And so the way to make, you know, a transition without actually using another footage to overlap on it is to actually go to the top left or top right of a footage uh, where there's a blue triangle and you actually get this kind of a quarter circle and a double arrow thing going on. You hold that and you drag it forward. What you get is the transition period right there. This works with audio as well, fades in audio. And what that is, is just fading in from black, fading from nothing here into that. Same here, just gonna fade out, fade music out. What we have is, um, and 